This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Bill Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, set me to heal the broken heart, preach the livers to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is nigh thee. Even in your heart, in your mouth, is a word of faith. So I preach, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God in salvation. Everyone who believes the Jew first, and also to the Greek, therein. There's a righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Thank God. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. And on my right, co host. Terry Brown, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. Good. And on my left, co-host Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Good. And then to your left, a co-host and apostle Anthony Reese. And how are you, sir? Doing well. Good. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. Well, I wonder if I get this right. Let's bring the microphone on. Up, up, up. Not what? quite. Oh. <laughs> Colorado. Sorry. On the wire. <laughs> Heather Kerr. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. Not a problem. I've been talking to you early, earlier. Uh -huh. Now, can we bring the microphones out? <laughs> I, some of them are out of town, I think. Amen. Amen.
Hey, Matt, Penny? Yes, sir. We did some posting yesterday. Yes, we did. Uh, about two of my sisters, Betty Jackson, Tennessee, and Linda Shane Rossat, Missouri. Amen. And the oldest sister, Dorothy, is with the Lord. She's three years older than me. Betty's three and a half younger, and Glenda's 14 years younger than me. It's nice that she was born, came along because uh, Dorothy and Betty and I were all scattered doing something, and Mother and Dad needed some help, and Glenda made sure she took care of them. Amen. So, uh, I want to say, Dorothy graduated in, when I started high school. She graduated that year, and she went to John's Business College in Springfield, Missouri. Amen. Uh, she didn't think it was necessary to go to the university, and I'm sure it was right. She ended up became a pastor's wife Amen. of several churches. But Betty, or pardon me, Dorothy had a son, Galen Mitchell. He's 66. He's a neurologist. University of Pittsburgh, uh, as Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and a private practice. He does both. He's on staff and got a private practice. Um, but he's he's got some problems right now that I'm going to deal with. And I'm a veterinarian ex. Uh, I'm an apostle. I'm going to play with him. Help him. It, it, Galen was telling me about his mother, my older sister. She, uh, the Lord would tell her about praying for certain things. Amen. I didn't know that about her, but that's a Great blessing, that's what he does with me. Amen. He's always letting me what to pray for, and some of them are kind of tough. But she had a, a great prayer career. She did a lot of praying. Galen was telling me she'd hear God and she'd go Pray about a certain thing. That's a great blessing. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. She went to heaven six years ago. Amen. Dorothy, smart, uh, born again when she's 17, I believe. And did the best she knew to follow the Lord. She didn't have a revelation of the gospel, as I do, but she wasn't supposed to, I guess. But she is a descendant of eight different, eight different uh, founders. What? Founders of Rhode Island? Well, yeah, but servants of God, they came from Amen. England. They were separatists. Separatists? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, eight of them, and they basically established the six principal churches in, on the East Coast, right? Amen. Uh, Mary? They had the first one. 
They what? They had the first one, if I'm not mistaken, in America. Six the principal. What? They had the first principal, six principal church in America. Right. Right. Samuel Gordon was, I guess, involved is more than any of the eight. Would you say? Uh, government wise, yes. He was huh? government wise, yes. Yeah. He was a self-taught lawyer. He was what? A self-taught lawyer. Right. He knew that England's laws better than the magistrates did. Amen. That's what got him in trouble. Right. Well, didn't he uh, leave his family, his children, his wife, with the Native Americans? In the east? Yes, he did. And went back to England for a year or two? That's what he did. He had to leave them with the Indians because couldn't trust the English. But they were out to destroy them, and the Indians kept them, uh, the Indians, and he had a great relationship. But he had to go back to England to fight for the, uh, the charter for Rhode Island. For the charter. Right. Right. And they were the... Uh, there's eight of them were Rhode Island founders, right? Right. And the charter, basically, if I understand, was written, or at least they were involved in, in the charter, right? Um, yes, for sure. What happened was there were two religious groups here in America in those very early days. We're talking 1630, around right, there. Right. And there were two groups. There were the Puritans and there were the Separatists. Now, the, the Puritans wanted to take the Church of England and purify it. And the Separatists said that there was so much that was not uh, in the Bible in the Church of England that they wanted to separate it from it entirely. And when they came to America... The separatists were the pilgrims at, at uh, Plymouth, and they were also Gordon and his group. Right. But the Puritans had Massachusetts. Right. And, and what happened was that group was so strong that it took over the pilgrims. It took over Plymouth eventually. Right. And it wanted to take over Gordon and his group. But Gordon knew so much of the law of England that he was able to, to keep that separate for a while. But what happened was they knew that the only way to get away from Massachusetts, from the Puritans, was to have their own colony. And that's why Rhode Island is there. And they went to, they, he had to go back to England because Massachusetts, the Puritans, were trying to take over Rhode Island also. And so he went back to England to fight, to go to the king himself and ask permission to get a charter just for Rhode Island for the Warwick, I think was one of them. And there was another one. Right. And they said, even there in England, the Puritans were extremely strong in government. But that day that Gordon argued for their own charter, the king went with Gordon. And he was able to get the charter for Rhode Island. And the important thing about that is Rhode Island, that charter, Gordon and the, his followers of the six principal church, believed more in self-government and having the liberty of religion. And the Puritan said, no, we're going to govern you. You're going to do what we say and nothing else. And so that was the, that was the war between the two. And Gordon was able to win the charter. And Rhode Island, it's interesting if you follow their history, Gordon signed Rhode Island's constitution. And their constitution had such liberty in it. And it had a Bill of Rights, its own Bill of Rights, Amen. that that's what led to the Bill of Rights in our constitution in the United States. And the funny thing was, when they had to, to vote on the Constitution of the United States, Rhode Island was the last one that voted. They said, we will not vote for the Constitution until you have that Bill of Rights in there. That's why we have the Bill of Rights inside the Constitution. It's because of Rhode Island. Man, my, well, eight of 
any of my great-great-great-grandfathers right. were involved, right? That's right. Okay, Dorothy, my older sister, a descendant of them. That's right. Then me, I'm a descendant right. of them. Then Betty, she's a descendant. And then Glenda. Amen. Glenda's the youngest. We're all, we're all descendants right. of those eight great-great-grandmothers. Very influential in establishing churches in the East. Amen. And the churches they established were Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Amen. You want to read that? Sure will. They were established <clears throat> on these principles, which were the first time that any churches back then were. Amen. It's Hebrews 6. 6, 1. Chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. So there is your six principles of the foundation of the doctrine of Christ. They established <coughs> one of those churches in Providence, Rhode Island, right? Right. And later, they said that was the first Baptist church. It turned into a Baptist church, right? right? But the word Baptist really came from the outside. Not right. from the inside of right. that church. Right. They called them Baptists because they were one of the few back then that believed that you need to be baptized when you were older, when you had that can make that decision, not as an infant. Right. Amen. And that was a hot topic back then. I mean, there was a spirit with that Baptist church, one of the toughest I ever met. And we were in Plymouth, went north somewhere in Rhode Island and came back toward Providence. When we turned, I had a headache. Ralph Edge was with us. Kathy, and my, and Terry, my, and Debbie, Edge, Jared, Lisa, and Ralph was, had a book. He was a, well, I guess you'd say he was you tell us where to go. Uh, Your navigator. Navigator, yeah, thank you. And Terry Vi was driving. And Ralph found in his book, he said, oh, do you know what the first Baptist church that was formed was in Providence, Rhode Island? The first one in America? I said, no, I had no idea. You know what? That headache left me immediately. And you had no idea at that time how, how much your ancestors were involved in that area? I had no idea. Right. But I have wrestled with that Baptist spirit 50, 49 years. Amen. And yes, there are Denominational spirits. Yes. Simple as that. Methodist spirits, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Nazarene, you name it. All right. Now, Betty, Dorothy, Betty, Glenda, all descendants. Amen. As I am. Amen. Now, I've studied this a lot more than I have. But one of the most interesting things, you see, I was a horseman, and I studied quite a few pedigrees. And when I was reading uh, the pedigree of the Millers, my mother's side, is that call it pedigree? Yeah, that's cute. Well, sure, we'll make them horses. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the first one was 
Sam McGordon. The second one, Stukely Westcott. Third one, uh, I forgot his name. Anyway, the first four, uh, they're on paper in front of everybody they love. The first four, all four of those ministers went to a straight to uh, Thomas Westcott. Amen. All of them were ministers related to Thomas. And from Thomas Westcott, it was a straight line to Neville Miller, my great grandfather, and Frank Miller, James Miller. It's amazing. Straight line to them. I've studied a lot of pedigrees. I've never seen one that straight. Who was your ancestor that baptized Roger Williams? Because uh, he was the, Ezekiel Holloman. Ezekiel Holloman was the first man in the United States right. that baptized somebody as the Baptist as the bap, as baptism is written in Romans six. He was not they were not baptizing infants. That's right. And this is this was a this was, this 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 sent people to war in England. When you were to be baptized. Church of England, the Catholic Church said that you should baptize the infant eight days or right after they're born. But reading the Word of God, when the Word of God was open to the common man, your ancestors saw there's a baptism that is baptized in, according to Romans 6, putting away the flesh. And Ezekiel Holloman was the first man to baptize Roger Williams. And then once Roger Williams was baptized, he baptized the rest of the group. Well, let's talk about Roger Williams a little bit. What do you say? Okay. He was with those people. Amen. Uh, all eight of them, of my ancestors, Dorothy's, Betty's, Linda's. Amen. So I'm bringing my sisters up here. They're descendants as I am. But uh, Roger Williams said, we need an apostle. Amen. That we need an apostle. And he pulled out. He would not, he could, said he couldn't stay with the church because they needed an apostle. And he couldn't have a church without an apostle. He read that in Corinthians. And he said, we can't do this. And he left. He was right. Amen. You have no church without an apostle prophet. Amen. Lay the foundation. Well, guess what? About 400 years later, an apostle showed up. Amen. They said, well, who was he? Doyle Davidson. Look, I'm a prophet and an apostle and teacher. A prophet and teacher first. And then apostle when I was sent to Africa in 85. It doesn't matter what you think. You may say, I'm a self-proclaimed apostle. That's what you don't know. You got your mouth when you shouldn't be running. I was a prophet and teacher called by God. And it took me four years, four years, to accept that I was a prophet. Four. Very hard to believe. And then I was sent to Africa in 85 January. I became an apostle of Jesus Christ. On May 22nd, 17, the Lord said to me, I have chosen you and sent you to the four corners of the earth to deliver my word 
without fear or despair. That's what Jesus said to me. So, you can call me self-proclaimed anything. You, you've been, uh, you've been eating the wrong foods. You ought to eat the Word of God. Amen. Now, uh, there are four. Kurt, can you tell me who those are from? Uh, Samuel Gordon, Stuka Westcott, the next one, and then Holloman. Obadiah Holmes? No, he's a bit. There's um, who? Samuel Gordon, Stukely Westcott, John Warner, and Ezekiel Holloman were the initial four that we had talked about. John Warner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, my son is coming forth out of my loins. Name is John. And I said, you know what's interesting? There are no Johns in my background. Would you disagree with that, Catherine? John Warner? There's a John Warner, and there's a also, um, if I remember right, there's a John Paddock. A what? A Paddock. Amen. Oh, that's right. All right. Now, it's amazing. I do none of this stuff. I knew the Millers and the Davidsons and some ancestors, but not very far back. But when this all came forth, about whenever it was, four or five years ago, it was easy to see our descendants. Amen. You follow me? Yeah. Amen. John Warner, how come I can't remember that? Amen. Now, thank God. Have you? We didn't ask you to read what we posted yesterday. I can. Huh? I can. Let's read that. Give me a moment to get to it. Look at that, Ben. You put, my ninth great-grandfather. One of eight great-grandfathers, Samuel Gordon, was one of the New England founders, and his work and writings were influential in establishing the Rhode Island Charter and the United States Constitution. My sister, Betty Jackson of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and Glenda Shane of Frystep, Missouri, are also descendants of Samuel Gordon and the other seven founders of Rhode Island. Amen. And Dorothy, who's in heaven, yes. was also a descendant as well. Right? That's right. Amen. Well, and you know what? They're children. Amen. They're children. L look at uh, Dorothy, Galen. Amen. Uh, the Rogers, 66 years old. Amen. He's a descendant. Amen. And he has two daughters, too. Huh? And he has two daughters, he has also. two daughters. Amen. Then, you of course, take up me. I'm next. There's Kathy Bye. Right. And there's Candace Bye. Right. And Ashley. And Rachel. And then there's Shelby. That's right. And there's Bodie. Bodie. I did well remember all their names. <laughs> Amen. All of them. Descendants. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Yeah, the interesting thing about that is, like I said, this is when God opened up the, the Word of God to the common man. These were people that God opened their hearts and could read to a point, and they saw that the churches that they were involved in were not following the Word of God. Right. And they had the courage and the boldness 
to split away, knowing some of them were going to die for that. Amen. And a lot of them ended up in prison for that. And yet they, they stay, stuck to their beliefs. They stuck to what they read. And when you, you sent a, a text, I think, or an email to your sister Betty last night with Matthew 21, 43. Right. And she wrote back. It was interesting. She wrote back and she said, this gives me something to think about. Well, yeah, well, read that, would you? All right, it's Matthew 21, and we've read it many times here. But it's very significant for these last days. And it says, Matthew 21, 43, Therefore say unto you, Jesus speaking, the kingdom of God should be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to tell you something. It's amazing to me. Samuel Gordon did a, a commentary on what Psalm 110 right. called what something she the incorruptible. Uh, yeah, uncorruptible. In incorruptible. Incorruptible. Yeah, not incorruptible key. key. Right. Samuel Gordon wrote that made the comments. While he was in prison for right. his beliefs. Right. And you and I have read quite a bit of Gordon's work, right? Amen. Hey, uh, when he's talking about water baptism, one of the most interesting things that he wrote about. These guys uh, all wrote what they could see the Word of God said. I don't explain it. I just preach it. Amen. That's what the Word God said. But these people, every one of them, they're always explaining the Bible. You can't. If you do, you're going to lose. You're going to lose the spirit of it. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get into this. This is going to be real fun. So, Gordon, none of them, none of them were led by the Spirit of God. Couldn't be. If they had a bed, they'd have wrote what the Bible said. And they would not have been trying to explain it. But Gordon, <clears throat> A brilliant intellect. And he, he made something. A comment. I don't know if I remember it. I'm not going to try. But it was something about if your righteousness. There you go. Come on. Was from, and I can't, if, if your righteousness was not from the righteousness which is obtained through Jesus Christ. Right. Then. It is a spirit from the law. Amen. We got to find that. You got it. Yeah. Read that. <laughs> Thank God. It says, if there be a righteousness before, there whereby he is made righteous, and it is not the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. He is yet in his sin. If there be a spirit before by which he is illuminated, and it is not the spirit of God received by the hearing of faith, it is but a spirit of delusion arising from the works of the law. That's it. <laughs> a, the man had a tremendous intellect, and God gave him understanding. Understanding to that to point, see. yes. Delusion of the law. Amen. 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 Now, what time is it? It is 10.36. Amen. I think we need to move on uh, to Betty Jackson. She's three and a half years younger than me. i married to a veterinarian. Uh, they 
were married when they went to med school. And I was stunned. I was in Chicago working. I got a phone call from Betty, and she said, George wants to talk to you. I said, okay. He said, do you think I could get in med school if I applied? And I said, well, goodness, yes. If you want to come, you mean Missouri? He said, yeah. I said, come on up. He had to have one more year of undergraduate work. And I said, come on up. I'll recommend you. What was interesting, they don't tell you always, but when he went before the board to for enter school of veterinary medicine, I was his fourth year student. And one of the professors came to me and said, oh, Bob, I voted for him. I said, what how many voted for me? The interesting thing at the time was, wasn't he a mortician? He was a mortician. Back to the old funeral home. Amen. Amen. But he liked horses. He probably didn't tell them that, uh, like I did, but that's why he changed. But two or three professors knew what he was, and they knew what I was, and they knew what he was going to be by association with me. Amen. Turned out that's exactly what happened when he graduated from university. He got a job on a racetrack in Florida. And he also became friends with Ebert, Dr. Ebert. Dr. Ebert, they were great friends. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Betty Jackson, three and a half years younger than me. Like Dorothy, born again, young. We all were taught the same thing. We knew we need to be saved, born again. But Betty... Uh, she didn't go to Springfield uh, Business School. She went to Joplin Business College. She was working for Dr. Dutar, a physician in Joplin, and he sent her to business school at night. And she ended up getting uh, a medical uh, certificate I'm not sure all about it, but a medical certificate uh, in business school. And when she went to university with George, and he was in med school, Betty had not been to university, just business school, like Dorothy, and we'll get to go in the same thing. But she got a job, secretary, vice president, of the University of Missouri, and then the dean of the medical school. Amen. Betty uh, was laughing when she told me I went from all of that to secretary for a veterinarian. Yeah. <laughs> Her husband. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Now Betty's one of the directors um, <clears throat> Derek Branch, Ezra, other directors, George Jackson, director, Derek Branch, Ezra. They are the directors. Been there since 2003. They work in Ezra two or three times a year for six or eight weeks, whatever it is. Amen. They work for, through Israel when they're in the States. And they're associated with a church that was started by them in Tennessee. And what's it called? World Outreach, I think. Yeah. Amen. Now, then we've got Glenda. Glenda is the youngest one, 
and went to Ron's Business College when she graduated. Then went to work in the, uh, she went to work for a lawyer, I think, or a judge. And she ended up 50 years. A certificate from the university, from state of Missouri, 50 years service with legal. She was an officer of the court, right? She was. She was. She worked with the juveniles. She was a juvenile officer, an assistant juvenile officer, but then became juvenile officer and then she also worked with a judge as his assistant. Amen. And she spent 50 years in the judiciary of the state of Missouri. And she, she has semi-retired. She's still doing some work for them. Yeah. Uh, she won't retire. She's... She was born in 46. She also does something I think we need to note here. Uh, uh, she also has a ministry that every other week she goes to a nursing home, right. nursing homes, and she plays the piano in the afternoon, right. and they sing hymns all together. That's right. And she has a crowd that comes when she shows up, and she'll play the piano for them and sing with them. And she has ministered to more than one about being born again when they're in the nursing home. And they get born again. And they get born again. Amen. So I call her the evangelist. That's it. <clears throat> Amen. I think that's enough said about Sammy Gordon, Zuckie Westcott, John Warner, Zeke Alleman. I'll tell you one of the most interesting one of them to me is the one that I beat him. Is that Obadiah Holmes? Yeah. Obadiah Holmes. Man, that guy was punished. Yeah, he was. Amazing. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I got it back. And what time is it? It is 10.45. I think we've done, a, done enough about the sisters. Do you agree? Said enough about my sisters. Amen. You know, Glenda said, be sure to talk nice about me, Dad, Doyle. <laughs> no, that, I, I will say this. Um, uh, Lydia Prince made a comment about your sister. Betty. Betty. Lydia Prince said, Betty Jackson could pray. Amen. We talked about that this morning, about your sisters praying. Right. And it came from a family if you and and I'll remind us of um, Lute Davidson, and who was the eldest son? Who? Lute? Lute's the eldest boy. No, he's the next to youngest. Oh, okay. Was there praying for? Um. Is uh oh shoot. Hodge. Right, bro. They they were part of the group that was praying for Elliot Hodge. Oh. Floyd. That's what I thought Neva. it was Floyd. I couldn't remember Floyd's name. Right. Neva. All and, Davidson. And Luke was there. Right. Praying for Elliot Hodge. Right. And he lived. Right. I'm going to tell you about Granddad. He was a road contractor. A big one. He had 50 other draft horses. He helped build the dirt. Rolla, Missouri, that became U.S. 66 two years after he left. U.S. 66, I don't even know where it starts, Chicago, somewhere up in there. 
but it goes to the West Coast. But he was a major road contractor. Kelly did the bridges, and Davidson did the dirt. When he left the road, after he, the Lord got through with him, he went back to Missouri, or southwest Missouri and built Redwood Church in 26. It was dedicated July 4th, 27th. Amen. Amen. That's the church I was born in. Dorothy was born there. And Betty was. Glenda Bay was not born when they were going to Redwood. But Granddad, my size, by eight, and he was much more bone than me. He was a horse. If I've ever seen one. Oh, we got a picture of him up there. Oh, really? Yes. And you can tell by that picture, he was a happy man. Oh, you know what was interesting about him? He could pick up weight that was unreal. If I told what I know to be true, most people would think I was lying. So I'm not going to. But I knew him. He died in 46 when I was uh, 14 years old. But I, after dinner, I had a seat in a chair and went to heaven. What a way but, to go. Huh? What a way to go. Yeah. They didn't even know he was going. Amen. But what was interesting, he uh, led the, that church, building it. We've got records handwritten. Luke Davidson, second one, Dodson, David, Claude. Third one, Berkey. I don't know who this Berkey is, but they were involved, number three. And uh, I've got a guess. There's a Berkey I'd like to talk to if uh, she would talk to me. But last time I tried, she wouldn't. Uh, talk to me. But I'd like to know if she knows what Berkey that was that was involved in 1912 in building uh, or starting Redwood Church in Redwood Schoolhouse. Amen. Amen. If I could say something about Route 66... Yeah. Because your grandfather did have, uh, I mean, the road, he built the, the he did the dirt work right. in Rolla, Missouri. Right. I don't know how many miles he did, but when it became Route 66, if you think back to that time, this was back in the 20s, we didn't have airplanes flying. And and railroads we had, we, we had, but that was the first major highway, and it went clear from Chicago to the West Coast. And that was, if anybody went on vacation, they went to Route 66. They traveled Route 66 so that they could see the country. And, and my mother, when she was very young, they took a trip in the summer um, and they traveled Route 66. And it would take you through all those towns and there were the hotels along the way. I mean, it was, it was, the tourist attraction in the United States back in that time. And your grandfather had a part of it, building it. But if you're going to tell that, I'm going to tell you. I went from Joplin, Missouri, to the West Coast on Route 66. Route 66. And the only road that wasn't 66 was a turnpike from Joplin to Tulsa and 
up from Turner, turn back. Right. And uh, no, that was one from Tulsa to Oklahoma City. That was, oh my goodness sakes, the Oklahoma. Well, Rogers yeah. goes from Joplin to Tulsa, and Turner turned back, goes from Tulsa to Oklahoma City. Outside of that, it was Route 66 all the way. Amen. And I drove it with Patty uh, three or four times. I got one even better for you. Well, my, my dad lives. My dad lives a mile from the very first turnpike in the United States, and it was the Pennsylvania Turnpike. In fact, we had a saying when I grew up that if you didn't like somebody, you would tell them to hit the pike. Yeah, right. And it was, but the person that built the Turnpike in Pennsylvania and the, the first, uh, what, what did we call those, the first toll booth is just a couple miles from my dad's home. The, the man that built it, I think you'd recognize his name. It was Lieutenant George Washington. He, that was his first job hey, as a lieutenant, was to hey, build man. the turnpike in Pennsylvania. George Washington. George huh? Washington. He's the one that cut down the trees, his group, right. and, and made the, yes. And the first booth is right there a couple, a couple miles from my dad's house, still there. Well, folks, if you're offended, <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Kathy will. The Lord will. I believe we have obeyed God. Let's turn now to Terry Vine, and Water Vine Boys, Minister in Zong. Y'all know what to do, see. <laughs>
Son of Righteousness and the Lamb who was slain. You're the lily of the valley. You're my bright and morning star. You're the beginning and the end, the everlasting Father.
When it was dark in my heart, you brought light to me, a child of darkness became a child of light.
joyous shout in the honor of the rock of our salvation. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing him songs of praise.
But my older sister, husband John, her and her both in heaven. They have a daughter, Janet, in heaven. Gave it his wife and two daughters, Pennsylvania. Then, of course, my family heard. And the Jacksons, Betty, George Jackson, Israel primarily, and, and in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. A later elder of the church, there's their older son, Alan. Philip worked with him. And then Doyle has a church in Columbus, Ohio. Amen. The chains, thank God. Edgar's with Glenda. This is Edgar's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Edgar. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Ed. And they have a son and his wife, Darren and Miranda, manage and operate a fairly a real successful, large farm operation in Bryce. Mm -hmm. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace. Be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you next time. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.